Hey everybody, welcome back. These are some people that got a PhD in petty. I'm wearing my petty couture while reacting to some petty PH double Ds. Go to shop.shadowdebra.net. I made a dude get his nuts waxed on the first date after he lied to me. <laughs> I'm already so invested. Why do I love this already? You're nuts. When I was in my early 20s and online dating was just starting, I made a profile and said I was just not going to be into two things, smokers and people with kids. Just that. You could be anything else and if the chemistry is there, we are all good. We love a low maintenance queen. Isn't it weird how like sometimes it's like literally all we ask and they still aren't up to the task. I met this guy really early in the morning for a breakfast date and we were hitting it off averagely. No sparks, but no red flags either. Wow, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel, aren't we? Well, at least he's not a murderer. Well, actually... Do you hear yourself? The date goes on for two and a half hours. Breakfast was taking forever. That's a long date. Mm especially if there's no spark. Until we're splitting the bill and he tells me that he has a kid. Did he just like not read your profile or did he lie? Yes. I asked him if he read my profile to know that I was not interested and that he says, yes, I read that, but I knew if he just spent some time with me, <laughs> you see how great I am and how you'd be willing to see past that. I think that's for her to decide, not for you to lie about it. I was floored as now he wasted three hours of my life and was okay with being a liar. That was unacceptable to me. It's not even about the kids at this point. It's the fact that he lied. Not only did you not respect her boundaries and her wishes, she doesn't want to date anybody with kids. That's her choice. But you lied about it and you wasted her time. You should have said something in the initial conversation. You do with the banter a little bit. You don't waste too much of her time. You show genuine interest in her and then you drop the bomb. And you say, listen, like, I know you said that you don't want to date anybody with kids, but I would genuinely like to get to know you. If not, no worries. I just thought I would put that out there. You don't make her sit through a three hour long mediocre date. That hurt my feelings. And then you tell her, hell no. And I said, well, I don't want this date to end, but I have to go across town to get my Brazilian where they take all of their hair off, including the bum hole. <laughs> done in an hour. Want to come with me to get one too? Oh girl. Oh no, you did not. I did not. Oh, oh, stop it. It's not painful. A total lie. <laughs> Sorry. You're literally removing hair follicles from a butthole. <laughs> it's going to hurt. <laughs> and I think it's attractive on men to be clean there. No pressure, but I'm pretty busy the rest of the week and this is my only free day. He was all about following me anywhere. I told the ladies that this was his first time and that they should take everything, including the butt. He held my hand between a curtain and we both got them done at the same time. <laughs> He screamed a lot, but was a champ and went through with it. I made him pay for his own and never called him again. Stop. Stop it. That is very, very good. You get a PhD, my friend, with honors. If you're out there, Chris, please don't lie to women on the first date. It's a really bad way to start a relationship. Okay, so I guess a lot of people are really mad about this. She edited to say, thank you for all the validation that online dating sucks for all genders and you shouldn't go into it with a lie. Well, yeah, I think that kind of goes without saying. Two, yeah, I'm a horrible person. Three, it's not fake, but you can think so if you want. When I was in my early 20s, I did a lot of things I would maybe still do now and some I wouldn't. Getting a butthole wax is something that a lot of women do. A lot of women do that. A lot of men too. A lot of people do that. It's not like you're putting him through something some nasty procedure. Yeah, it's gonna be painful, but it's like a lot of people do it. She did it too. She was right there on the table next to him. He willingly went. He also willingly lied to her about having kids. So I think it's funny. I don't know. Not all heroes have carpet. <laughs> Does the carpet match the capes? No capes. No capes. Is it weird that I said it in Edna's voice? Wow, I love it. I love it when we all match each other's energy. I love when I think of something funny to say and I read it in the comments and someone else has said it. Same page. So this is how petty my husband. He broke his face playing basketball. And I was like, I can't keep driving you to urgent care every time you get back from basketball, so you need to pick up a new shoe. He ends up picking up paddle. He's really good because he's a tennis player. And he walks into the Fairfield tennis racket beach club whatever and asked about their paddle pro they said why don't you try parks and rec what an unbelievably unpleasant person okay this is too expensive for you you don't <laughs> but this is how petty he is he went to three towns over not even our own YMCA and joined their paddle team because he found out their paddle team plays 
the Fairfield Paddle Racket Club Paddle Team in their tournament. The tournament is tomorrow, so justice may be served finally, and he will get his vindication. So I'll keep you posted. That's him. Ah! Remember this face. Like, remember! Do you remember? Remember this face. I will remember that face forever. I don't understand why people assume that you can't afford things. You know, if you're there, you can clearly afford it. It's likely that you probably looked up how expensive it was. I don't understand why someone would look you up and down and essentially say you don't belong here when you've got good money ready to spend. He needs to pull the pretty woman move. Big mistake. That does remind me of pretty woman. Go back in there. Big mistake. Huge, huge, huge. I was dating this man. He had um, literally choked me out in a Dave and Buster's um, and split my lip in half. He uh, left bite marks all over me and I had to go to the emergency emergency room and get um, surgery on my lip to put it back together. <gasps> um, so he deserved it. Okay? Period. Uh, we broke up shortly after that. Then my dumb decided to get back with him because I don't know self-worth. After we got back together, I started setting some boundaries, but he started doing this really crazy stalkerish behavior, um, like showing up to my house uninvited, um, staying in my patio until I got home, like crazy stuff like that. So I broke up with him, and then shortly after I met my new boyfriend, the one who laughed at this video, and we were like already two years into our relationship. So it's been two years since I seen this man. My ex, his brother, calls me up on the phone and says, hey, he's in jail, and I was like, what does that have to f***ing do with me? And he's like, you're the only American that can vouch for him. And I'm like, vouch for him? Uh, they're like, yeah, you're like his US citizen friend that can say how good he is a person uh, and go to court and defend him because he's been there for a month. And I was like, okay, the, how do I do this? And then um, his lawyer contacted me and said, okay, we can schedule a time for you to meet so we can tell you what to say. And I was like, actually, um, I'm not gonna say um, he does not deserve oh, me to good. speak up for him. He does not deserve my time or energy or for me to bail him out of jail when I had told him to begin with to stop drinking alcohol and driving. Um, so yeah, and um, that was the end of that. And then a, about a month or so later, the wife of the older brother of my ex messaged me and said that he got sent back to Israel and was not bailed out of jail. And she said that that was the best actually for him because he was not doing well here in America at all. So yeah, he deserved that. Sh okay, so let me get this straight. He got himself deported by committing crimes, some of them against you, and you just didn't do anything to stop it. Let's just clarify that right now. You're still responsible, but no way in hell are you gonna go and vouch for somebody like that. I'd do the same thing, especially if it means this man getting the hell away from me. Just desserts. I think that was delicious. Good for you. Honestly, technically, you didn't even really do anything petty. You just didn't lie about your ex. You didn't lie and say he was an upstanding citizen when he went to jail so that he could stay in the country. That's all that happened. I love it. Cause you could have also been effectively kind of like committing a crime in lying to a court about someone's behavior and character. I've been secretly fattening up my two coworkers for talking crap about a friend of mine. I've known my friend since high school. I'll call him Bob. We're both in our 40s now and ended up briefly working for the same company, but different locations. Sometimes employees travel to different locations for training and whatnot. And a little over a year ago, my buddy ended up here for a half day of training. My friend has a lisp and he's self-conscious about it. He was teased in high school and it's affected his self-image and self-esteem. The guy's all heart and he's a really cool guy if you get to know him. He's a bit overweight and pretty self-conscious about that too. I wasn't here the day that Bob came to train, but the next day I went to the front office with two of the sex secretaries to say good morning, like always. We had a good rapport. And they were talking with a fake lisp and absolutely cracking up like it was the funniest thing in the world. You are a horrible human being. I knew my friend was here, but asked them anyway what the lisp was about. The two a-holes didn't know Bob was one of my oldest friends. Even then, that's a move, that's a move, that's a move. 
move. They could barely keep a straight face about how the guy from the other place sounded like a loser who would probably never find a woman. Oh, what a mean thing to say. He looked greasy. He was fat. Can you imagine what he would sound like in the bedroom, lisping and sweating? Ha ha ha. That's just like mean spirited. Honestly, we all talk a little shit, but you don't need to be a total dick about it. I was pissed, but kept a good poker face. Kind of chuckled and said something to the effect of, you guys are terrible. And f you. <laughs> they seemed proud of themselves. These two a-holes have a sweet tooth. For the last year, I have relentlessly been bringing them donuts, chocolates, Starbucks drinks with so much sugar they could give an elephant diabetes. <laughs> Oh man, it's not hard to make them eat. I just say stupid cliche, funny stuff like diet starts tomorrow. Or if you take small bites, there's fewer calories. Diabolical. They laugh and they eat. Oh wow, this is really, really bad, but good also. No joke, they've now gained about 40 pounds a piece and now complain about stuff like finding clothes and being tired all the time. I wonder what that's from. Bob never found out about what they said. He left the company for greener pastures shortly after that incident. He's doing good. I have no intention of stopping. <laughs> Stop. This is like a blind item. I don't know if this is true, but apparently Meryl Streep, while she's on set with you, will feed you cookies. I don't know if this is Meryl just being really nice. Y'all know actresses are super skinny, right? They definitely don't eat cookies. Like, <laughs> but it's coming from Meryl Streep. So like, you gotta take a cookie. You know what I mean? This is just like something that I've heard. I don't mean to gossip, but it's relevant to this story. I've heard that she does that to fatten the actresses up because there is no way in hell you are refusing a cookie from Meryl Streep. I wouldn't. No one that can do what I do. I take that cookie. I probably put it in a shrine, honestly, after I take a bite in front of her. I have a feeling that this got people kind of heated, but like, let's be honest here. They could also be saying no to all the sweets and the goodies, okay? This guy's not Meryl Streep, you can say no. Who says no to a snack? Well played, Petty Crocker, well played, you're my hero. <laughs> that was great. Good joke. Tom Petty and the heart attack breakers. Oh, 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 why? Destroying them by exploiting character flaws they make fun of others for. You've been deputized by Lady Karma. This is why I'm literally fine with it. They're making fun of him for being fat. We could all get a little fat at some point. We probably will. I've been a little fat. Sometimes it gets to that point. And guess what? You'll get there too, sweetheart. So don't be making fun of other people for being fat. Cause we all gonna get a little fat and sassy. I can't wait until I'm fat and sassy. Should I just get really fat and sassy right now? now. <laughs> would you guys still watch me if I was fat and sassy? You probably would. Absolutely. I was the lawyer for the wife whose husband told her she was useless because she didn't have a job since she got laid off, but she was still spending their money. She decided to kill two stones with one bird by saving money and getting revenge on him at the same time. The husband had the biggest meeting of his career coming up next week, so the wife called their internet service provider five minutes before the meeting and canceled their service. And just to make sure he wouldn't be able to contact his boss to let him know something was going on, she went ahead and called and canceled their wireless service as well. Maybe it's his rude comments. Maybe it's his weird neck beard. Maybe it's Maybelline. All she knew is she was going to divorce him and get out of there. I mean, this guy was tripping out so much about his work meeting that he didn't even notice his wife packed up the car and left <laughs> all before he realized that he didn't have communication with the outside world. About a week later, the husband's on the phone with his boss who's still mad at him for missing that meeting and he gets a postcard in the mail. I mean, his ex-wife is now chilling on the beach in Turks and Caicos. She just wanted to write him a nice note that she had hired me and that we were gonna come after him for alimony, for half of his assets, so that she could live a nice, comfortable life away from him. Also, she started dating his boss as like a fun rebound to make him mad. Stop! Not the boss! Oh, the boss! People that are experts in petty, especially when it comes to breakups, <laughs> dating someone that your ex knows, like a boss, a brother, a dad. I'm not gonna say I support it, but I support it. <laughs> I'm keeping you on speed dial and I'm not even married. Pretty sure that this guy is like a lawyer and he just shares all of his petty cases. I hope I don't need you, but I also hope I do at one point, sir. Subscribe!